This video is brought to you by Banks. It's 2023 and it's been a while since my last ultimate iPhone home screen video. On the verge of adopting iOS 17, I think it's time to show you my current single home screen setup, the principles of which you can use on your iPhone regardless of which model you have. As always, the goal for me is to keep things on a single home screen while allowing me to have quick and easy access to all the tools and apps I use in the means of combining and utilizing widgets, stacks, shortcuts and clever hacks. Eliminating redundancy is key, in fact, I'll give you an example right now. I am removing the camera app from the home screen to leave space for what matters more, while having three additional ways to launch the app. Control center, double tap on the back of the phone, and of course, the lock screen. Unlike my previous setups, this time I have a lot more going on and I'll be sure to walk you through it. There are a lot of benefits to this setup, one being the fact that it works excellent on both small and large phones. It saves time having everything at my fingertips, not having to swipe through endless amount of home screen pages, and with it, I have full control over the incoming traffic, messages, phone calls, and notifications. Also, unlike before, again, I have a clear separation between my creative slash working mode and relax and chill mode. This is where I take full advantage of focus modes. This setup saves me time, reduces stress and speeds up and automates frequently executed tasks. So let me show you an overview and then we'll dive into details. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? So in a nutshell, we have three screens, the home screen, the widget page on the left, and the app drawer on the right. That's it. Let me start with the widgets page first because it's more straightforward. As I mentioned earlier, everything is stacked. The very first stack on the top left is something that I call the stats stack. In it, I place widgets that show me stats like my activity, the battery levels on my devices and my sleeping habits. If I were to install another app that shows me more stats like a YouTube live counter, for example, it will go in that section as well. By that time, you probably see where I'm going with this. Everything has its own predetermined place. Next up is my awareness stack. This stack holds the default monthly calendar widget as well as a custom made weather widget. Now I tried finding a simple weather widget that will give me the forecast for the next few days, but apparently such thing does not exist, especially in the smallest size widget. So I used widget widget and created this one myself. It gives me the most important information for today as well as the outside condition for the next three days. If I tap on it, it opens the weather app very simple and useful. Next, the first medium widget is my important information stack. This is basically a stack that holds two email widgets. Since I'm always on top of achieving inbox zero in my accounts, all I need are those two widgets. The first one is from my main email clan, Hey, and the second is my Gmail app for all my brands and partner communication channels. If I happen to see an unread email in either of those, I can consider it important. Finally, the largest widget is my tasks app, Tick Tick, which looks a bit weird compared to the other widgets. That's because it uses the pre iOS 14 widget style, which is legacy and only exists in the widget area of iOS, which I think is actually very cool. I can expand it and interact with it a lot more compared to the other widgets, something that should be fixed in iOS 17. Okay, let's talk about the homepage. The very first widget that you see on the top is again a stack. The first widget is Widgy and features a medium widget that I recently built that is an homage to the old Samsung weather widget of the past that I made it look a bit more modern, matching the vibes of iOS. This was actually an idea that was sent to me by a viewer which reminded me of my old Note 3, so I was like, why not? I think it turned out great, and let me show you a little hack. If I tap on the main area of the widget, I trigger a new to-do shortcut, which I use to quickly enter tasks as they come to mind. This is by far the quickest way to do that, since it's just a tap away, and I have a very large area to press on, not having to push you know, a small plus sign somewhere. The weather portion of the widget, of course, opens the weather app. I will package this widget with the matching smaller widget on my website for those of you who want to grab them and support a creator. Also, I will be releasing that widget for my members soon, so if you're interested, you can join the channel below and get access to wallpapers, widgets, as well as all sorts of discounts. Creating those widgets, by the way, takes a lot of time and tinkering. This is something that I normally do in the early hours a moment when my iPhone battery is usually 
depleted. Whenever I hit the red light on my battery icon, I pull out the Banks MacLab Stand Go power bank, which can top up the iPhone to 50% in 30 minutes. With a whopping 10,000 mAh capacity, I'm covered more than once. And what's neat is the fact that I can charge three devices all at once. With two ports combined with the MagSafe wireless charging pad, I can charge two phones and my earbuds, for example. The built-in battery indicator gives clear view of the remaining juice, but by far the coolest feature on this battery is the built-in kickstand. I can prop the iPhone horizontally or vertically and even take advantage of pass-through charging where I can charge both the phone and the battery pack at the same time. This portable battery takes up very little space while packing a lot of powerful and amazing features, so check out the first link in the description below to grab the Banks MacLab Stand Go power bank yourself. So underneath the homepage widget, I have a four shortcuts widget. It's a swipe away and I use it as follows. If I tap on play, I'm presented with a list of genres that I most often listen to. Next to it is my AirPlay shortcut, which allows me to choose where I want to broadcast whatever I'm listening to, whether that's my HomePods, my Mac or Apple TV. The next shortcut is a very simple one that saves a lot of time. I called it Finder and when I tap on it, I'm presented with a list of my most used folders that I can directly go to. No need to open the Files app and navigate back from where I was last time. Next is a scan shortcut, which opens the Adobe Scan app immediately ready to scan documents, something that I use a lot. Okay, so the food just came in and I wanna scan this receipt. So here's how it works. I come over here to the shortcuts and I press on scan. And just like that, Adobe Scan opens up, holds steady, and that's pretty much it. Right from the home screen. Very nice. Next up is a very simple quick entry stack for Notion. Everything is work related. I have three shortcuts that open my most used Notion databases. Topics, videos, and quick notes. Quick notes, for example, is the place where I dump everything that comes to mind in terms of work. The topics page is where I write down ideas for future videos and so on. Next to the quick entry stack is my listening stack. In it, I keep the Overcast podcast widget, Apple Music widget, Audible for audiobooks, and on top of that, I have an Outplaying MD vinyl widget, which I talk in my iPad home screen video, which I'll link at the end of this one. The remaining of the space below all these widgets are apps and folders that I most often use and they're pushed down on purpose so I can have easy access and reachability to them. I'll get to some cool apps worth checking out in a bit, but before that, it's worth mentioning the folder that I keep anchored to the dock. This is my notifications folder, which holds messaging and other apps that display red bubbles. Now, this sounds weird, but it makes sense. The idea here is to eliminate distraction from regular notifications and observe red bubbles only on demand as they come in. Basically, when I see a red bubble there, I'm to check it when I'm ready, not when the app decides to throw a notification at me. With this folder, I don't have to worry about red bubbles that appear in the app library because only those in the folder are of somewhat importance to me. The next important aspect of the homepage is the very last icon above the dock that reads home. This is a shortcut that switches to a focus mode called home. You see, I have four focus modes, life, home, kids, and sleep. Life is what I've been showing you up to this point. It's my day-to-day -day active focus mode that revolves around my work, productivity, and creativity. Home is the chill, relaxing mode which I use once I'm done with work. The kids focus mode displays a home screen filled with educational games and fun apps for my kids for whenever I want to give them my phone. No access to my personal organization. Sleep is well, sleep and it's activated automatically based on a schedule. Kids is triggered manually from the control center and life and home is toggled by pressing on respective shortcut on each home screen. By now you might have noticed that I don't use the default focus mode of the iPhone, which is in fact no focus mode. Instead, I choose to use my own focus modes at all times and for one main reason. With focus modes, I have yet another layer of controls as to what comes through to me in terms of notifications and calls. The home home screen is similar to my usual live screen with a few exceptions. On the very top, I have an explore stack which features a medium app store widget that I can glance at and keep track of what's going on with you know all the new apps out there. Below it, I have the Microsoft's app start which is basically a Bing AI interface. It's great for exploration, news, and research. Below that stack, I have another medium stack, which is my entertainment corner. With it, I can catch up when it comes to movies, 
and TV shows, as well as podcasts and audiobooks. Below that, I have a folder with all my home appliances apps, which unfortunately don't work with HomeKit. Until I upgrade everything at home, I will have to live with this folder. If you want to optimize your home screen like I did here, one tip that I can give you is to take advantage of Control Center. I, for example, don't want to see my home appliances there, but I prefer to have quick access to my camera as well as the screen recording, remote control, the toggle for light and dark mode, Shazam, and of course, the white noise part of background sounds. A few apps that I recently started enjoying that are worth mentioning here are as follows. My Mind is an awesome catch-all app. The slogan there is remember everything and organize nothing, which is exactly me. Whenever I stumble on something interesting, I can simply grab it to save it in my mind, whether that's notes, quotes, highlights, photos, videos, you name it. It's awesome. Sofa is a catalog app that I use to fill in with shows and movies I enjoy a lot. I can use it to share, you know, titles with my friends and of course, add things that I want to get to at a later point. Finally, InnoReader is a very interesting RSS reader app that allows me to enter direct feeds to online channels, which I might take advantage of as a better way of organizing my personal and work-related stream. If you want to know the exact steps I use when I set up a new Mac, check out my guide video here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.